And we're just about ready to go here at Ellie Box Stadium as the Tigers are preparing to take the field. The umpiring crew here today, Eddie Newsom, will be working the plate. It'll be Darren Dietrich at first base. Travis uh, Hargruder will be around at third. And, uh, Charlie, uh, for those who may be tuning in for the first time uh, to listen to baseball, uh, why don't you take this opportunity to just kind of recap what you've seen in the first couple of games. Well, a couple of sharp pitching uh, performances by the starters. Kevin Gosman, five strong innings. On Friday night, Ryan Eads, five strong innings last night. Good work from the bullpen. Uh, we've seen uh, guys like Nick Rumble and Kevin Berry who, and Chris Cotton who were with us last year. And we've seen uh, newcomers like Aaron Nola and uh, Nick Goody come in and have very good performances as well. Tigers have played error-free ball through two games, uh, which is very good. And uh, the, the hitting has come from a lot of places. Um, only one home run, and that was Bo Didier yesterday, but a lot of... A lot of two-out hits uh, that we've seen and some uh, offensive production off the bench. Jared Foster, for instance, uh, came off the bench with a big uh, two-run hit yesterday. I think that was a, uh, it was a two-run double that uh, Foster hit in the sixth inning last night. And uh, so he'll get a start today. Uh, Ty Ross, who is not in the starting lineup right now, had a, uh, today had a, uh, a couple of nice games. Uh, including, you know, we, we talked about uh, that, that he's lost about 20 pounds, stole, stole his first base yeah. as a Tiger, and uh, beat out an infield hit. So he's, uh, he's had a real nice uh, weekend, and uh, been a real nice weekend uh, for LSU. Obviously two uh, very uh, convincing wins that Tigers got out early uh, and, and put the game away uh, in the first three innings. Well, you know, we've always talked about it, and it is a fact of baseball. It's not uh, the, the matter of how many hits you get them you get it's where you get them and and at what time you get to have the timely hitting and apparently that's what LSU has done and taken advantage of the opportunities that the opposing teams have given them with a lot of walks and hit batters and that sort of thing yeah 10 hit batsmen I think uh, you know through two games uh, a lot of bumps and bruises on this team but also uh, you, you're right uh, a lot of walks Alcorn uh, with seven walks last night there were uh, six walks in the game for Air Force's pitchers combined on Friday night, so you're absolutely right. But to LSU's credit, they've moved those guys around and, uh, and scored. Well, the wind is going to be a factor here today. It's, uh, it is gusting, and I mean steadily, probably 15 to 20, uh, blowing from here, Charlie. It looks like almost straight in at times and at others a little bit from left to right. So a ball hit in the air. Uh, the wind's going to have a play on it. And we're ready to go as the first pitch is brought to you by AT&T. Get it faster with 4G Rethink Possible. Adam Hill will lead things off, batting from the left side, hitting 273. Here's the windup by McCune. The first pitch misses low and inside, and it's one ball and no strikes. 330 down the lines here at Ellie Box Stadium. It is uh, 365 to the power alleys in right and left center, and at 405 to straight away center field. Big 30-foot batter's eye in center field. Here's the pitch to the plate, swung on it and fouled off the front of the plate. Uh, actually ends up in the uh, right in front of the catcher, Moore. Tosses it back out to McCune, and it's one ball and one strike. Defensively, around the horn for LSU. We'll give that uh, to you right after this 1-1 pitch on the way from right-hander McCune. Fastball strike over the outside corner. It's 1-2. Hand over at third, Nola at short, Yoakum at second, Katz at first, more behind the plate. And in the outfield, Slade, Jones, and Rhymes from left to right. Now here's the one-two, swing and a foul back into the screen behind the plate. And the count stays, one ball and two strikes. LSU's next game at a, a little bit unusual time. They'll play Wednesday afternoon uh, against the Magnese Cowboys at 3 o'clock. First pitch here at the box. Now McCune into the windup, the one-two pitch on the way. Took a little something off and missed high and outside. It's two balls and two strikes. So if you want to come out to campus, so uh, you can catch baseball at three and basketball at seven as LSU uh, returns home to play Georgia. Trying to make it four in a row in the league. The two-two swung in on a line drive that is hit out into center field and drops in right in front of Jones for a base hit. That one was not hit real heavily, but it had enough to find some grass, and so Hill leads off the game with a soft line drive single to center field. That'll bring up Blair Roberts, the second baseman hitting 429. Not sure the wind didn't kind of blow that back away from a Jones, Charlie. It's, uh, it was not hit very hard. It was soft, and the wind pushed it down and back. 
And it dropped right in front of Joe. Plus Jones is shading over towards right center to account for the win. And he still is with a right-handed batter at the play. There's a fastball strike by McCune over the outside corner. Yeah, it's going to be a factor, and there is a huge gap between Slade, the left fielder, and Jones, the center fielder, who also is playing in very, very shallow. And so is right fielder. Ray, well, all the outfielders are playing in very shallow because of the win. Here's the pitch. Swung on. That is a fly ball hit into center, shading his eyes. It's Jones. He's called off, and the catch is made by Rafe Rhymes. Out in right center, and there's one gone. Roberts flies out for the first out of the ball game. It'll bring up the catcher, Garrett Custins, hitting 545. He had a, we are told, a home run back on uh, Friday off of Goswin in that first ball game. That's from the right side. Runner at first, one out, no score. We're just underway, top of the first. Stretching the pitch, he shows bunt down the third baseline. It's foul. Hanover comes charging in and gloves it. Trying to bunt the runner down to second base. And it was hit foul down the third baseline, and it's no balls and one strike to the right-handed batting Customs with Ellix Bast on deck. Customs had a heck of a day on Friday. He had three doubles in the game against Alcorn and then a homer and a double in the game against LSU. Well, his batting average reflects that at 545. This team, however, as a whole hitting 196 after their three games. McCune stretches and delivers. Check swing, but it hit the bat and fouls. Rolls foul back to the base of the grandstand, and McCune is ahead in the count 0-2. And, and now with uh, Custins uh, at the plate, Jones is back in straightaway center field, but he's still not very deep. Well, the infield, the outfielders still are playing in much, much shallower than on a normal day because of the gusty wind, and McCune takes too much time, and Custom steps away from the play. Not a bad crowd at all uh, here at the box this afternoon because of how cold it is. Here's the pitch. Fastball. Boy, that just missed. Low and inside. And it's one ball and two strikes. And the fact that the uh, Lady Tiger basketball team is playing at home as we speak. And we had over 8,000 on opening night and uh, over 2,200 last night. And, uh, well, you know, thanks to the folks yeah, for coming out last absolutely. night. Had to wait out the rain. It was an awful day in Baton Rouge yesterday. A 1-2 is grounded foul down the third base side. And that one hops up into the uh, grandstand just beyond the third base dugout. And it's 1-2. And, and it's not, you know, it's not real easy to be sitting out there today, even though the weather is beautiful. With that north wind, it's rather chilly. But we got a nice crowd here today. There's a difference between those sitting in the sun and in the shade. Yes, there is. Fastball misses low on outside, and it evens accounted two balls and two strikes. They, mo they may want to trade seats in May, but today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're looking for the sunshine today. You talk about crowds. There were some crowds in, in uh, Columbia for Carolina baseball on Friday night and yesterday. Here's the pitch. Swung on on the ground ball. It's into left field for a base hit. If one hops between Hanover and Nola. Second hit of the inning as uh, Hill moves up to second base, and the Air Force has runners at first and second with just one out for the cleanup batter, Alex Bost. Really impressed with Custins as a hitter uh, from what we've seen this weekend. He fell behind there, 0-2, battled his way back, fouled off pitch, and, uh, and drove one in the left field. And speaking of Carolina's LSU baseball team will be playing there. Uh, later on this year, Charlie, you had a chance to go up there opening season. It's to be my first chance to see that ballpark, but from... What it looked like driving by it, it's quite a It's quite a beautiful a place. park. Hill at second base. Custons on at first. Stretched by McCune. There go the runners. The pitch is swung on and grounded toward short. The only play will be to first base. Throw over is good. And in time, as Bast is out uh, six to four, Nola to Katz. Six to three, Nola to Katz. Hill moves to third. Customs moves up to second, and here's Patrick Lobo, the right fielder, hitting 111, batting from the left side. Hit and run keeps Air Force out of the double play there. That was Taylor made, but the runners going kept him out of it. McCune trying to get out of a little jam here in the top of the first inning with runners at second and third and two out. Here's the stretch, and here's the pitch. Swung on, and it is fouled back into the screen over by the third base dugout. It's 0-1. 
Nice experience uh, pregame to, to watch the Air Force. Uh, not only the gentlemen we talked about that threw out the pitch, but during the uh, national anthem, their team lines up and they salute the flag and the pitchers that are up on the scoreboard. They are in dress uniform. Here's the pitch to the plate. That bounces away from uh, Moore, but he keeps it in front of him. And the runners are not able to advance. There's one ball and one strike. Everything they do, Jim, you know, we watched them come into the stadium. We were here extra early on opening day. They came in from the outfield, uh, you know, just getting off the bus, two by two, in formation. You know, yeah. they, they walk. Everything they do. Well, kind of makes you proud to see that. Yeah. You know, that's, that's our military. Here's the stretch. Look out at second base. The 1-1 pitch is in the dirt again. Nice job by Moore to smother it. And it's two balls and a strike. I said uh, on Friday, I said, this is kind of like a soccer friendly. You know, th this is, you know, LSU wants to win, of course. Uh, don't get me wrong, but uh, there's a lot of respect for the guys in that dugout that's got uh, a lot more to do with, with, than with just baseball. Well, it is amazing how shallow the LSU outfield is playing. Here's the pitch. Swung on and grounded foul down the third base side, out of play. And it's two balls and two strikes. I would guess that Slade Jones and Rhines probably no more than about 40 feet out on the grass. And as much as we're watching these flags blowing, I'm, I'm wondering if it's blowing even harder down at field yeah, level could, because of be. their depth. Now McCune with the 2-2 pitch. Call strike three. Got him looking and that retires the side. In the inning for the Air Force, no runs on two hits, no errors. They strand two in scoring position. And we go to the bottom of the first with a score of the Air Force Academy nothing. LSU coming to bat on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hanover back for his senior season here at LSU. A CST scoreboard update will give you a women's basketball score here in just a moment. But the softball team out in Las Vegas in that tournament losing to uh, Cal 6-0 at the moment. Here's the first pitch. And it's a strike over the outside corner. 0-1. Oh Around the horn defensively for Air Force. Pierce at third. Roberts the shortstop. Hill is at first base. Custon is around at the, uh, is behind the, the plate. The next pitch is a line drive right to the second sacker who hauls it in. And that is um, a very well hit ball. Blair at second base made the catch. Five, five, five. And it brings up Jared Foster. Foster, uh, the DH today, has only been up one time, but he got a base hit. So he's averaging 1,000. That's his batting average. The first pitch in the dirt. And it is one ball in no strikes. Again, around the horn for Air Force. Pierce at third. Roberts at short. Blair at second. Hill at first. Custons behind the plate. And in the outfield, it's Osmond, Bast, and Lobo from left to right. Fastball, strike over the outside corner. And it's one ball and one strike to the right-handed batting Jared Foster with Rafe Rimes on deck. Foster came in last night in the sixth inning, had a two-run double, and then was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded in his next plate appearance. There's a swing and a miss on an off-speed breaking pitch, and the count goes to one ball and two strikes. We're scoreless in the bottom of the first inning. Air Force had a little um, threat going in the first, but McCune got a strikeout to end the inning with runners at second and third. Here's the windup of the pitch. Swung on and a chopper to third. Pierce gets it on the second hop. The throw over to first is in time. Two up and two gone for the Tigers in the bottom of the first inning. And it brings up the right fielder, Rafe Rimes, who has a very healthy 600 batting average coming into the ballgame. Rimes from the uh, right side. With two out and nobody on. Here's the wind up of the pitch. And it misses a little bit low. One ball and no strikes. Ron spent the weekend on base. He's got three hits plus three walks. Amazingly, he's managed to not be hit by a pitch. <laughs> the 1-0 is low and inside. And it's two balls and no strikes. This is the uh, second game of the day for the Air Force. They started at 11 o'clock this morning. What time? 10. 10 o'clock this morning. Okay. And um, one, here's the pitch. Swung under the ground, ball to third. Scooped up by Pierce. Throw to first in time and a very nice play. Pierce had to go in the hole between short and third to scoop that one up and throw out Rhymes. And the Tigers are up and down in order in the first. We go to the second, no score on the LSU Sports Radio Network. 
of the second inning. There is no score. And for the Air Force, it'll be Taylor Aubin, Ryan Kramer, and Matthew Roberts to uh, head to the plate against Tiger right-hander Kurt McHugh. Every day your car takes care of you, so take care of it. Don't use low-quality gasoline that leaves crud in your engine. Use the gas that cleans Chevron with Tecron Care for your car. And Tiger fans are in a free night this spring when you stay three separate times at Best Western Hotels in Louisiana. Visit bestwesternlouisiana.com backslash spring for more details. Ryan headed hitting freshman Taylor Osmond. Batting an even 200, and he hits that one in foul territory down the right field line. Tigers giving chase and making the catch. A nice running play. Rafe Rhymes caught up with it in foul territory between the uh, home plate and pitcher's mound area of the Tiger bullpen. Had to fight off the sun and battle the wind on that one and made the nice catch. Almost ran out of real estate. I thought the, the wind might blow that one foul, but he's able to catch up with it in the bullpen. Ryan Kramer, the DH, batting from the left side, looking for his first base hit of the year. And Hanover comes in a little bit at third base. Here's the windup by McCune and the pitch. A little off-speed pitch that misses low and inside, and it's one ball and no strikes. Air Force Academy, of course, where Coach Paul Maneri coached for years prior to coming to LSU. Fastball high and outside, and it's two balls and no strikes. Got another former school, uh, Notre Dame, coming in here uh, right. later on this break. Maneri spent six seasons at Air Force and ten seasons with the Irish. Here's the 2-0. That's the fastball strike. It caught the inside corner, and it's two balls and one strike. Appalachian State will be in next weekend for the weekend series. LSU not leaving home much this year. Here's the 2-1 high, and it's three balls and a strike. The only pre-conference uh, road game is a, uh, a game at McNeese That's on the last day of the month. That's a week Wednesday, I believe. Yeah, the last day of the month. Uh, the leap, leap day, 29th of uh, February. Yep. Now the 3-1 pitch. And a missed inside. Ball four, and that's the first free pass of the game. As McCune walks Kramer to bring up the shortstop, Matthew Roberts. Well, you know, I said that that's actually not true. Uh, we, we go to Tulane as well in early March. Yeah. And then also back down to New Orleans for the Pontiff Classic. But those are almost, neither one of those are almost considered a, a road trip. They're, they're there every year. They're, but the Tigers don't play out on the weekend uh, out of the box except for conference play this year. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Off-speed breaking pitch, and it is 0 and 1. For some reason, I had it in my head that two-lane game was after we played Mississippi State, but I was mistaken. Yeah, and the uh, the one Thursday through Saturday series that each team plays this year, LSU is on the road. It's at Auburn this year. Here's the stretch, and here's the pitch. Swung on and line drive. One hops off of uh, Nolan Shorty, flips to second base to Yokim covering for the force out. Did a nice job of uh, recovering on that one, didn't know. And one hopped off his knee, but he was able to reach down and pick it up quickly and force Kramer at second base. And Roberts is on at first with two out on the fielder's choice. I think I said at Auburn, uh, but that may be the season ending. Series. No, the season ending one's at South Carolina. Okay, but, so, but you're right, Auburn yeah. is a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's because the league, for the first time, has decided not to play on Easter Sunday this year. And here's the number nine hole batter, Noah Pierce. Wings and misses on a fastball, and it's 0-1. And LSU is at Florida for that uh, yeah. that si that uh, Easter weekend series, but uh, the league won't play on Easter Sunday this year. Two outs, the runner at first, 0-1 the count, the pitch. And that is a strike over the outside corner, it's 0-2. That's McCune throwing a downward plane at fastball. It moves down and away from right-handed hitters. More set up just off the plate. McCune able to frame that one up pretty good. Now the 0-2 is on the way, and that is popped high in the air, and this is going to be an adventure. It is uh, Katz who's making the call behind home plate, <laughs> and he makes the catch. That's well done by Katz. Absolutely. The call off Moore, who almost tripped over the bat, uh, didn't know where it was. It's a very nice play by Katz. The wind blew that uh, all the way back behind the plate, and that retires the side. In the inning, no runs on, no hits, no errors, and one left. We go to the bottom of the second. There's no score on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Bottom of the second inning, LSU will send up Katz, Slade, and Jones to uh, take on the Southpaw Michael Chichi, and LSU looking for their first hit of the ballgame. 
you want to get your business in front of thousands of LSU fans, you get information on advertising in the official LSU Game Day programs and the 2012 Football Fan Guide. Call LSU Sports Properties at 578-7571. Print advertising opportunities offered in various packages. 578-7571 for more details. And Budweiser, the official beer of the thirst inning. Great times are on deck. Grab some buds. Cats to lead things off. Batting from the right side. He's at first base today, hitting 250. Uh, I think, based on some information we've been given, the reason for that uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday series on Easter week is that ESPN's televising. Television, okay. Everybody else is playing on Easter Sunday. Here's the first pitch to the plane, and it's a fastball that misses lower inside, and it's one ball and no strike. So it's just us that's it's, not playing it's on just Easter. Us okay. Yeah. No score. LSU looking for their first hit of the ball game. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Breaking pitch down and away. And it's one ball and one strike. LSU and Air Force playing for the second time this weekend. An unusual weekend series with three game, three teams involved. There's a fastball strike over the inside corner. And it's one and two. Alcorn, the other team, who lost to Air Force in the game played earlier. Lost to LSU last night, 19 to nothing. So Air Force, Air Force, LSU, and Alcorn all playing here this weekend. The 1-2 swung on and fouled into the dirt. And it's 1-2. and two. And we say it all the time, Jim, but uh, big uh, kudos to the grounds crew. They had to work awfully hard well, uh, uh, all me. weekend. <laughs> you know, yesterday it rained all day, and I mean all day. Before we got here to the box last night, they had the field ready to go. And then two games Friday, two games today. Now the one-two pitch swung on a high fly foul down the left side. That's going to curve and go back up over the roof. And the count stays at one and two. Charter, we got back on with the basketball team on the charter a little before six o'clock last night, and it had stopped raining. Boy, as we were driving in and home, there was water everywhere. And as we were flying in looking down, some areas were flooded. Here's a one-two swung on and grounded down the third base side. That's going to curve foul. As uh, Pierce comes in and scoops it up. So as wet as I know the ground was, it's truly amazing to look out here at Ellig Box Stadium, and it absolutely does not look like a single drop of water has fallen. Play five games in three days with, I'm going to estimate, somewhere between 12 and 16 hours worth of rain. Yeah. <laughs> no it, small it, feet. No fall, small feet. It looks perfect. Now the wind up and the one-two pitch. Just missed the inside corner, and Chi-Chi thought he had that one. And that evens the count up at two balls and two strikes. The Mason Katz leading off for LSU. Here in the bottom of the second inning, scoreless ball game. Well, the score is 0-0. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. He got a piece of it, but uh, Kestens caught it, and Katz goes down swinging to lead off the bottom of the second inning. First strike out of the ball game for the southpaw, Chi-Chi. Pitch up in the zone, and Katz couldn't find it. Here's Jackson Slade, the left fielder, right-handed batter, hitting 250. And Jacoby Jones standing on deck. And the pitch to the plate, swung on, and there's a line drive down into left field. It drops in for a base hit. Slade gets LSU's first hit of the ball game, a line drive single into left field in front of Osmond. And that is the first Tiger base runner of the ball game. Brings up Jones, who has made the transition from second base to center field. It's been well documented. And he's hitting a healthy 429. Had a terrific summer in the Cape Cod League, playing exclusively in center field last summer to get him ready for the switch. Bats from the right side. Check of the runner at first base. Here's the pitch. And that misses high. There's one ball and no strike. No score. Tigers batting in the bottom of the second with the runner at first and one out. Chi-Chi checks the runner at first, delivers, swung on and fouled back into the screen over by the first base dugout. And it evens the count at one and one. Austin Nola is on deck. Aslay takes his lead at first base. Check of the runner, pitch to the plate, a curveball, and a good looking one. Catches the outside corner for a strike. It goes to one and two. One ball and two strikes to the right handed batting Jones. 
The outfield straight away, and they're playing a little bit deeper than the LSU outfield did. Here's the pitch. Swung on and a fly ball into center field. Bass coming hard, makes the catch. And going back quickly to first base is Slade as Jones flies out to center and brings up Austin Nola. Two out a runner at first for Nola, the shortstop. Hitting 333, batting from the right side. Now this is a, a really nice crowd as we look around Nellig Box Stadium. These seats have really filled a lot since just before this game started. There's a line drive foul down the right field side that will roll down through the LSU bullpen. And the count is 0-1 to Nola with Tyler Moore on deck. Cat struck out to open the inning. Slade singled in the soft liner into center field, and then Jones flied out to center. Here's the pitch. Curveball just missed outside. Evens it counted one and one. CST scoreboard update. This was from a few minutes ago. Uh, LSU and Auburn Lady Tiger basketball were tied at five, but they've moved on in that game now. 18 and 9 LSU leads it uh, just about halfway the first half. Okay. And good for them. They're kind of on a roll right now, just like the men's basketball team is, and that is good to see. Good time of the year to get hot if you're a basketball yes, team. Yes, it is. Here's the 2 1. Misses low on inside, and there's three balls of a strike. And of course, we're all excited that the uh, men's basketball tournament this year is in the New Orleans Arena. Just down the road. Boy, New Orleans is a hot bed for big events this year, aren't they? Here's the pitch to the plate. Swung on, hit out into right field. Lobo drifts back, shades his eyes, reaches up, makes the catch in front of the warning track, and that retires the side. In the inning, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. We go to the third. Nothing, nothing. LSU and Air Force on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Our armed forces. And the, these kids you know, at the Air Force, uh, and I call them kids, uh, young men, that uh, the, the sacrifices they make uh, to go to school at the United States Air Force Academy, the academic load is, is very, very hard. Uh, their uh, extra work uh, towards their military career is very, very hard. To play baseball at the college level is a very time-consuming thing. To be able to do all of those things, let's just say they don't get a lot of nights where they sleep eight eight hours, okay? So, you know, you really have to appreciate the, the dedication and sacrifice that these guys make. And we do. All right, it is a nothing-nothing game as the Falcons will bat in the top of the third inning, back to the top of the order. Adam Hill, Blair Roberts, and Garrett Custins do up. Verizon 4G LTE, America's largest 4G LTE network and the official wireless provider of the LSU Tigers. And in one way or another, LSU Health touches the lives of nearly everyone in Louisiana. They offer great quality patient care while training the next generation of physicians. That's a great value for Louisiana. For your health, we are your team, LSU Health. Hill is uh, one for one. He's single to open the ball game. Tries to bunt his way on there and misses. And it is 0-1. He singled. And wound up at third base as uh, McCune pitched out of a little bit of a jam. They had runners at second and third with two outs, and he got Lobo on a call third to end the first inning. Here's the 0-1. Fastball outside, and it's one ball and one strike. One and one to Hill, the leadoff batter, leading off here in the third inning. McCune rocks and fires. Swung on the ground ball towards second base. Scooped up by Yoakum to throw to first in time to Katz. And there's one gone. Nice recovery by Katz who made an initial play on that ball. Then had to scurry back to first when uh, could not come up with it and uh, got the throw from Yoakum. Katz, um, a young man who really came on strong for LSU late in the year last year. And is going to be a big player in any success LSU has this year. Here's Blair Roberts, 0 for 1. He flied out to Rhymes in right field and hits that one in the center field. Jones shades his eyes and makes the catch. Well, he's playing them just right. I'm telling you, uh, LSU infield, uh, outfield is playing in very, very shallow, and Jones only had to take a couple of steps to make that catch, and quickly there's two gone. They can afford to do that because of the win, and, but also because of Jones' speed out there. Anything that uh, 
is hit over his head is going to have to be hit a ton for him not to track it down with that wind blowing in the way it is. Here is a Customs who is one for one. He's single back in the first inning. Shows bunt, takes a fastball high on outside. And it is one and oh. One ball and no strikes. Two outs and nobody on. No score in the ball game. Top of the third inning. There's a fly ball that also is hit high out into left center field. And it is Jones over to make the catch. And quickly they are three up and three down here in the third. We go to the bottom of the third inning. It is LSU nothing. United States Air Force Academy nothing on the LSU Sports Radio Network. We're back in the Mazda broadcast booth here at L.A. Box Stadium as we go to the bottom of the third inning. A scoreless ball game. Nothing, nothing. LSU and Air Force. And for the Tigers, it'll be more Yoakum and then back to the top of the order for Tyler Hanover. Louisiana Lottery, a proud sponsor of LSU Athletics, Louisiana Lottery Corporation, celebrating 20 years of winning numbers. And Tiger fans can stop by the fan zone at each home game to register their child age 12 and under to be the junior announcer at an LSU baseball game presented by Bruce's Sweet Potato Pancake Mix. Visit the fan zone in the concourse behind home plate for more information. And this is junior announcer inning the bottom of the third. And Tyler Moore will step up. He is the catcher batting from the left side, hitting an even 200. It's uh, been pitcher dominated thus far. Air Force with a couple of hits. LSU with one as we're in the bottom of the third. Here's a fastball that one hops in front of the plate. And it's one ball and no strikes. Tyler Moore uh, started last night at first base behind the plate today. And a couple of LSU players that uh, are going to man multiple positions. The 1-0 is grounded hard and foul down the first base side. It ricochets through the LSU bullpen out into right field. And it's one ball and one strike to the left-handed hitter. Katz will be in the outfield and at first base. Moore will be behind the plate and at first base. The 1-1 check swing on a curveball. It's down and away. They say he did not go around. And so it's two balls and a strike. And Moore is... Uh, one of the few that bat from the left side that LSU has this year. Now the 2-1 pitch. Swung on and grounded down the first base side. Knocked down by the first baseman Hill. Picks it up. Tosses to the pitcher covering. And a very, very nice play right there. That ball over the bag and looked like it may be headed into right field. And Hill made a nice dive to knock it down. He rolled over and tossed to the pitcher covering. And Moore is out. 3-1, to one, and it's so great to see in baseball, the opposing team makes a great play in the home team applause. Knocks Hill's cap off that uh, he hit the deck so hard keeping that ball down from going down the line. Here's Yoakum, who takes a fastball high on outside. Yoakum, right-handed hitter, second baseman, hitting 167. One out and nobody on. No score. Bottom of the third. Here's the pitch. That's a strike over the inside corner, and it evens the count at one ball and one strike. Tyler Hanover, the LSU leadoff man, is on deck. Now the 1-1 pitch. Swung on and a line drive, hit out into center field, and it is caught by Bast. Yoakum got a pretty good piece of that one, but the win just blew it back <laughs> a little bit and allowed Bass to make a fairly easy catch. Top of the order for Hanover, who lined out to second. So he is 0 for 1 in the ball game. Right-handed batter, the wind-up and the pitch to the plate. It is a little bit high, and it's one ball and no strike. But the only chance you've got on any ball to the outfield to get a hit, if it's got any air under it at all, is down the right field line. Yep. Anything else is going to hang up unless you just absolutely crush it. Here's the pitch. Fastball right down the middle. And it's one ball and one strike. One and one to hand over with Foster on deck. JG into the windup, and here comes the one-one pitch. That just missed the outside corner, and it's two and one. Moore grounded out on a nice play. Three to one. Yoakum fly to center and a fastball misses high and outside. 
And Hanover has worked the count to three and one. Now Chi-Chi is ready and he delivers the three one. That's a strike over the inside corner. And I believe this is our first full count of the ball game. Now the wind up and the payoff pitch on the way to the plate. Ball four high and outside and that's another Tiger walk presented by AT&T. AT&T get it faster with 4G. Rethink possible. And the first walk of the ball game issued by Air Force. A two out free pass and here's Jared Foster who is 0 for 1 today. Grounded out to the third baseman Pierce back in the first inning. Foster from Barb High School uh, spent the fall with the football team, but he has now decided to concentrate solely on baseball. Check of Hanover, the pitch to the plate, swung on and lined up the middle. That's into center field for a base hit. Hanover is going to stop at second as Bass comes up with it. Fires it back into the cutoff man, the shortstop. And so LSU has a little two-out rally going here with a walk and a single back-to-back, -back, and it brings up Ray Prime. And just a little we've got to see of him. He's got a nice compact swing. He runs really well. He's a terrific athlete. Sarah Foss is going to play a, a role on this team, I believe. Custins goes out to say something to uh, Chi Chi as Hanover stands at second base. Foster at first. The first base runner LSU's had at second in the ball game is we're tied at 0 0 in the bottom of the third. Here's the stretch and the pitch to Ryan. Swung on a fly ball to center. Fast, waiting for it. Makes the catch and that retires the side in the inning for LSU. No runs on one hit, no errors and two men left. We played three innings, neither team has scored on the LSU Sports Radio Network. No score in this one. Both teams have been unable to score a run as we go to the uh, top of the fourth inning. Leading off uh, for the Air Force will be Bass, Lobo, and Osmond. Kurt McCune has been the dominant for LSU. He is still out on the mound. And to take you through the middle innings, here is Charles Hanegriff. Thank you, Jim. McCune through uh, three innings has given up no runs on two hits. He's walked one, struck out one, and thrown 36 pitches. 0-2-0 zero, and zero the line scores for both teams. Here's Bass who grounded to short his first time up from the right side. McCune winds and delivers. And that's a breaking ball strike 0-1. Here's a quick uh, CST scoreboard update. The uh, Lady Tiger basketball team uh, wearing pink today over at the uh, Maribich Assembly Center. We'll give you that score here right after this next pitch. The 0-1 is popped up. I uh, think that's going to go out of play unless the wind blows it back. Third base side, and it's going to go out of play on the roof. Lady Tigers leading 27-20 to 20 with uh, 420 left to play in the first half at the Maribich Center and out in Las Vegas. The uh, softball team is trailing 6-3 in the third inning to the third-ranked the third rank Cal in that tournament in Vegas. How come we never get to go to Vegas? I've wondered about that myself. Here's the 0-2. Fly ball down the left field line. Hanover in foul territory called off now by Nola, who will make the catch in foul territory just shy of the bullpen for out number one. That'll bring up Patrick Lobo, struck out looking his first time up. And we had a trip scheduled to Vegas. I want to say it would have been the year that uh, Hurricane Katrina hit. And uh, they changed, or the year after Hurricane Katrina hit, they changed up the schedules on us. Here's Patrick Lobo down and in ball one. Well, I think baseball is a little bit like uh, football, Charlie. You hate to give up a weekend series right. and go off right. on the road because uh, you know every time you play here at this facility, it's going to be sold out. Here's the 1-0. That's down and in, two balls and no strikes. In fact, I think it's been since 2007, maybe 2008, that we've been on the road for a uh, non-conference series. The 2-0 is popped back into the screen, 2-1. And, and, and the reason for that is... Where would that have been? Stetson, I think, is the I last didn't place. Go, so no, I didn't go. Yeah. Stetson, I think, is the last place we okay. went. Um, and the reason is, uh, quite frankly, we got to pay for this place. That's right. <laughs> and it's a beautiful facility, and why not? The 2-1 just missed inside. Three balls and a strike. Well, we, we were correlating that with football. Last year, football had went, went out on the road twice. 
very uncharacteristically and had only there were only six home games. Here's a pitch and is is hit in the right field going back and making the catches rhymes on the run. Nicely done fighting the sun out there and there's two gone. And and this year of course the Tigers have eight home games and uh, that that's a big big time difference uh, money wise and as far as the uh, fans are concerned. Yeah and there's other reasons that the coach Maneri likes to play uh, the non-conference games uh, here at home besides just the, you know the, the financial obligations to the program. Here's Taylor Osborne. From the right side, first pitch is down and away ball one. Osmond is 0 for 1. He doesn't, uh, you know, don't want to have to set his travel roster in week one or two. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the other way to look at that is sometimes it's, it, it's, it's a good thing. Here's a 1-0, down and away. To get, take your team out of the friendly confines of your home stadium and take, you, take them on the road maybe to play a series before you do get into SEC play and have to go on the road. Here's a 2-0. That's a fastball strike two and one and to get them used to uh, at least to traveling there are mm -hmm. two non conference uh, single games before conference play starts. Here's a two one that is high three balls and one strike and they are going to Lake Charles. They're going to Lake Charles in New Orleans to play two lane uh, both of those uh, games before conference play starts. Here's a three one filed it back into the screen and the count is full. I mean, first, 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 time, down. first time in a while of going over to Lake Charles, I think. Yeah. And the, the other part of scheduling is that LSU is committed to playing in the Pontiff Classic every year. They're committed to a home and home with Tulane, and then they usually play one more uh, in state school on the road, and they, they rotate that. This year it's McNeese. Payoff pitch strike three called. Fastball on the outer half. Second strikeout for McCune, and the Air Force goes in order in the fourth. We go to the bottom half scoreless on the LSU Sports Radio Network. No scores. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Cat Slade and Jones, four, five, and six in the order due up for LSU. Tiger fans, members of the Go Zone on LSUSports.net can now watch live streaming video and listen to all LSU radio broadcasts with the new LSU Sports mobile app for iPads. Official apps are also available for smartphones in the Apple iTunes Store and the Android Marketplace. Visit www.lsusports.net slash apps for details. And today's game... Brought to you in part by Budweiser, official beer, beer of the of the thirst inning. Great times are on deck. Grab some buds and buy Chevron with Tecron Care for your car. We also would like to thank the fine folks at Southern Barbecue for supporting LSU Tiger baseball, the official barbecue sauce of the LSU Tigers. Chi-Chi's line is almost identical to McCune's through three innings. No runs, two hits, one walk, one strikeout, 42 pitches, and Katz hammers the first thing he sees in the left field for a base hit. Cats with the third LSU single of the afternoon, and the leadoff man is aboard for the first time for the Tigers. And I'll bring up Jackson Slade, who singled his first time up. Bottom of the fourth inning. Sunday afternoon baseball at Alec Box Stadium. GG comes set. Here's a pitch. That's a breaking ball strike on one. Short lead by Katz over at first. Here's the 0-1. That's a strike. Another breaking ball. This one caught the outer half. And it's 0-2. LSU has not uh, attempted a stolen base on the weekend, though they've hit and run a couple of times. What's the reason uh, for that is LSU has enjoyed big leads all weekend long. Here's the 0-2. Filed it back into the screen. Count remains. No balls and two strikes. Afternoon baseball on Wednesday as McNeese State comes to Alec Box Stadium. 3 o'clock start. Rare midweek afternoon start. Here's the 0-2. High and away, one ball and two strikes. Preceding LSU and Georgia, men's basketball to PMAC. We were talking earlier about the men's tournament being in New Orleans and all the major sporting events slated for the Crescent City. Here's a 1-2. This one is lined in the right field for a base hit. Nice job by Slade who fell behind 0-2 and then fought off a pitch, took one, and then went the other way with that one. First and second, nobody out. Biggest threat so far for the LSU Tigers. 
already had a couple of pretty big events down there and and then the men's SEC tournament comes up. Final got the four. Final is there. four. I, get, I think the uh, Super Bowl is there next year. That's right. You know the home team, uh, the home team has never or a team has never played in its home stadium in the Super Bowl. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if Saints make it next year? Would be a wonderful <laughs> thing. <laughs> Here's Jacoby Jones who flew out to center field. His first time up. First and second, nobody out. LSU has also not laid down a sacrifice bunt yet this season. But again, they have enjoyed uh, big leads. Let's see what Jones does here. He is swinging away, pitch high and away, ball one. Hill was uh, creeping in, but I believe Jones has uh, any intention of bunting here. Paul Maneri in the coach's box at third base. It's been interesting that he's uh, been rotating at, in the third base box. The 1-0 up and away. Two balls and no strikes. Hey, he spent about uh, the first five, maybe six innings in uh, the coaching box. And then is uh, given away to Javi Sanchez. Been a lot of juggling of... Uh, the lineup in the uh, later innings here first couple of days is a 2-0 and this one is hit to left center field long run for Bass but he makes a running catch in the gap and uh, Cass will tag he's on his way to third and he is safe just wow. in under the tag very aggressive base running because Cats didn't get back to the bag to tag until Bass had already let go of the ball it looked like to me before he started his break, so a very aggressive base running, and he gets in there at third. And also looked like he slipped down uh, yeah. as he started to go. He did. He did. We're seeing the replay now. He slipped coming out of his break, and by that time, he is uh, pretty much committed. Right-hander has gone down into the bullpen uh, for, for the Air Force. I think that's right-hander David Baska. Here's Austin Nola. Pitch is down and in ball. One runners at the corners with one out. Here's the 1 0. Ground ball foul. Down pass Maneri at third base. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. Saw Baska in the first game for an inning. Slated first, Cats at third, one out. No score, bottom four. Chi Chi comes set, here's the 1-1. One, one. Ground ball, right back to the mountain. Now they got Cats hung up. Come to the plate, they're going to run him back to third. Go to third. Running back to the plate, pitcher covering. Now got to go back to third, and he flips it over there. Cats got back. Well, Cats that, got back. That was a big mistake by Air Force. They, uh, the pitcher, for some reason, just didn't throw the ball to third base. The shortstop was over there He covering. was waiting, yeah, yeah. He just, just a mental mistake and good hustle on the part of Katz. He didn't give up on the play, and uh, that one goes in the favor of LSU. Just a fielder's choice, but now the bases are loaded with one out, and Katz just stayed in that run down long enough. And here comes uh, Mike Keselowski to the mound. As the official bank of LSU Sports, Capital One Bank is extremely proud to cheer on our beloved Tigers in every game and every sport from the entire Capital One family. Go Tigers! Capital One Bank, the official bank of LSU Athletics. And the whole infield is in talking it over, and this may be just a, an opportunity here for uh, Keselowski not only to encourage his uh, pitcher, but to do a little coaching about uh, how to uh, <laughs> maybe how to better handle that rundown next time around. Uh, Katz may, may be as aggressive a base runner as LSU has had in a decade. He and uh, uh, Mikey Matuk, I guess, would be the other one. Uh, they're never going to give up on a play. They're always going to try and take the extra base. They're going to make you make a play. Here's Tyler Moore who grounded the first pitcher covering his first time up. Bases loaded, one out. Pitch to the lefty. Down and away, ball one.
Nola at first, Slade at second, Katz at third. Here's a 1 0. Lined up the middle and in the center field for a base hit. Katz will score. They will wave Slade around. Here comes the throw from center field. It is up the line and Slade gets in there. Nola on his way to third. LSU leads it two to nothing. Ball that was up from center field was up the line at third base. A very hustling play by Jackson Slade. And a swipe by Custons just missed him as he ran by him. And that's a two RBI single. Tyler Moore gets his first two runs batted in as an LSU Tiger. And that'll bring up Casey Yoakum. Again, Nolan went to third on the play. So the Tigers have him at the corners with one out and now a two to nothing lead. Yoakum flew out to center field his first time up. Lady Tigers take a 33-26 lead to the half at the PMAC. CST scoreboard update. Fish Yoakum, he shows bunt, pulls it back, throw going down to second base and in the center field. And that will score the run. The throw trying to get Tyler Moore bounced in front of second base and then went into center field and it is a three to nothing ball game. That's probably going to be scored as an error on the catcher. I'm thinking stolen base E2. Yeah. We'll see. So now a runner at second base uh, with one out and a three to nothing lead for LSU. Here's a 1-0. That pitch is low. Two balls and no strikes. They got an error up there, but uh, so I, I'm not sure where they're going to score it, but I think that's... Yep, stolen yeah. base E2. Yeah. LSU now has two stolen bases out of their catchers this weekend. Here's a 2-0. Down and in. Three balls and nothing. And Kazlowski is now uh, gazing down at the bullpen to see if uh, David Baska is ready. Yeah, if he loses Yoakum, I'm fairly sure he'll probably make the, make the call. Tichi cruised through three, but is running into problems here in the fourth. Here's a 3-1. That's over for a strike. Yoakum taking all the way, and it's 3-1. and one. Tyler Moore, the runner at second base with one out. Chi Chi comes set. Here's a 3 1. That is outside ball four. It's an ATT walk. Get it faster with 4G rethink possible. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Three to nothing. LSU leads it back to the top of the order for Tyler Hanover. And they're not going. They're going to leave him in. Let him pitch to Hanover. Kozlowski took a couple of steps out of the dugout to uh, shout some encouragement to his pitcher. First and second, one down. And Chichi steps off the rubber. Now he comes set, lefty to the righty Hanover. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss, double steal, throw down to third base, and they got him by plenty. Well, it was a hit and run, and Hanover couldn't, couldn't get a bat on it. The pitch was very high. He took a swing at it, but it was very high, and they throw out Tyler Moore at third base. Yoakum uh, moves down to second base on the double steal. He will, however, not get credit for a stolen base there. So Yoakum at second base now, two out. Here's the 0-1. Uh, That's a breaking ball for a strike, 0-2. Oh LSU's had a couple of hit and runs that have worked perfectly this weekend. That one didn't, didn't get the pitch that they needed. And now Baska has set down. 
in the bullpen. Bluff back towards second base and Yoakum goes back to the bag. 0-2 to Hanover. Here's the pitch and it is high and away. One ball and two strikes. Tigers with three across in the inning. Big blow, a two-run single by Tyler Moore. The other run scored on an error. He did his seven errors now committed by LSU opponents this weekend. Here's a one-two. It's down and in. Two balls and two strikes. Well, that did not miss by much, and Chi-Chi uh, really thought he had that. Sixth error uh, is the one today. Two balls, two strikes, two out, and a runner at second base. Glance back in that direction. Here's a pitch, and Hanover swung and missed. The ball comes out of the catcher's glove. He'll have to throw down the first, which he does, and that will retire the side. But LSU gets out in front. Three runs on three hits. There was an error and one man left on. We go to the fifth. Three to nothing Tigers on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Three to nothing Tigers as we go to the top of the fifth inning. Kramer, Roberts, and Pierce, seven, eight, and nine in the order due up against Kurt McCune. Verizon 4G LTE, America's fastest 4G network and the official wireless provider of the LSU Tigers. Satisfy your late night cravings at Taco Bell with the melty, crunchy, spicy, and grilled taste you want. Hours may vary by location. Kramer to lead it off. He walked his first time. Checks his swing, but it's a strike on the outside edge, and it's 0-1. Three to nothing, Tigers. Top of the fifth. Pitch from McCune. Fought it off down the third base side into the Air Force dugout, and it's 0-2. Now the 0-2, strike three called. Fastball, pretty much down the heart of the plate there, and that's three strikeouts from McCune. All of them, batters caught looking. That'll bring up Matthew Roberts, the shortstop. He reached on a fielder's choice back in the second, 0-for-1. From the left side against the righty McCune. First pitch is fouled away down the third base side. Base is empty, one down. Here in the Air Force fifth, the 0-1. Fouled away down the third base side again. And the count goes to 0-2. Air Force is going to get uh, somebody back up, and I... We'll see if that's Basca again in their bullpen. Not sure if that's not Del Toro. It is Del Toro. Yeah, Todd Del Toro, who we have also seen this weekend. Here's the 0-2. Chopper to second base. Yoakum charging. Pick it up on a couple of hops and flip over to Katz. Two gone. Roberts out 4-3, to three, and that'll bring up Noah Pierce, third baseman. He popped out to first in his first at bat. Base is empty, two down. Righty to righty, McCune's first pitch is a ground ball up the middle, and that's going to get into center field for a base hit. First hit allowed by McCune since the first inning. And breaks a streak of 10 in a row that he had set down. Third total in the ball game. We've had uh, eight hits combined by the two teams, and all eight have been singles. And what you would expect on a day like today with the wind blowing the way it is. Back to the top of the order for Adam Hill, who's one for two with a single. He grounded to second his last time up. 
Left-handed batter, and the first pitch is fouled straight back into the screen, 0-1. Runner at first base, two down, three to nothing, Tigers, top five. Del Toro is walking into the dugout, so he's probably going to come out and pitch the bottom of the fifth. The 0-1, breaking ball stays a little high, one ball and one strike. McCune comes set. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That's a strike on the inside corner, and it's one ball and two strikes. That fastball again that uh, it moves down and away from the righties is able to jam those left-handed hitters and still catch the black of the plate. And McCune's got that working. He's at his absolute best. Here's the 1-2. This one's a little blooper in the right field. Rhymes coming hard. Makes a diving catch as his hat and his glasses come off. Rafe Rhymes with a nice running diving catch and that will retire the side for Air Force in the fifth no runs on a hit no errors and one man left we're halfway home at the box three to nothing Tigers on the LSU Sports Radio Network three to nothing Tigers as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning due up uh, for LSU it'll be Foster Rhymes and Katz we've got a cable lock foundation repair pitching change raising houses raising standards CC went four innings gave up five hits three runs Two of them were earned. He walked one and struck out three, and he gives way to Todd Del Toro. Well, Del Toro is uh, making his second appearance of the weekend. He uh, he pitched two innings, as Charlie said, didn't give up a hit, uh, didn't walk anybody, and he struck out two. So he is uh, making his second appearance of the season, both of them against LSU. Tiger fans of all age, uh, ages 12 and under, don't miss your chance to be a part of Mike's Kids Club, presented by Board Milk for a one-time $10 membership fee. You get a Mike's Kids Club t-shirt, lunchbox, free admission to all regular season soccer, volleyball, gymnastics, and softball events, and lots more. To sign up, log on to lsusports.net backslash Mike's Kids Club. Mike's Kids Club, presented by Board. Jared Foster to lead it off. He is one for two with a single, which came in his last at-bat in the third. Righty versus righty as Del Toro gets ready to make his first pitch, and here it is. That's a fastball high, one ball and no strikes. Three runs, five hits, no errors for LSU. No runs, three hits, and an error for Air Force. Here's the 1-0. Inside almost hit him, two balls and no strikes. The attendance uh, officially today, Charlie, 10,341 paid, and sitting here watching this, 5,078 in the seats. Ground ball, third base side. That'll stay fair for Pierce. Long throw across the diamond in time. And there's one gone. Foster grounds out to third to open the Tiger fifth. And that'll bring up Rhymes as 0 for 2. He is grounded to third and flown out to center. Base is empty, one down. Rhymes from the right side. The first pitch is a strike on the outside corner. Now the 0-1. This is a little looper in the center field. Bast will make the catch. And there's two gone. It is just going to be, it is just going to be difficult. Yeah. If there, like you said earlier, if there's any air under the ball, it, it's going to probably be caught today. I don't bring up Mason Cass, who's oh, uh, excuse me, one for two. He is singled, struck out, and scored a run. From the right side, here's the pitch. Fastball strike, 0 and 1. Katz, uh, responsible for one LSU run when he kept himself in a rundown long enough. To get back to third base is the 0-1 down low. One ball and one strike. Swing and a miss at the 1-1. It's got a piece of it actually. And one ball and two strikes. Cats wearing number eight this year. That's a uh, tradition they're starting here. The 1-2 is high. 
two balls and two strikes. He was number five last year, but Mikey Matuk wanted to pass number eight down to Katz. Much like the football team passes down number 18 is uh, their special number from year to year. The baseball team going to start that. 2-2 two -two is chopped foul up the third base side. Just a, a number to signify a guy who plays the game as uh, hard as you can play it, as well as you can play it. And is busted every time he puts the uniform on. And that, that describes Katz perfectly. Here's a 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball is short, and it's off of Roberts. It's short, and Katz going to get down to first base. That will be an error. Describe Matuk pretty well, too. Yeah, it does. <laughs> no question about that. That's, uh, that was a tough chance for Roberts. Uh, that ball was lined right at his feet. And uh, he'd have had to have been very lucky to have caught that one. And it's going to yeah, be they, a base They're going to give him a hit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I call that one a little bit early. Here's Jackson Slade, who's two for two with a couple of singles. That's a breaking ball strike on the inside edge. And that and, one was hit right, so hard. It was yeah. just he had to just react at the ball, and and uh, it, he would have had to just been lucky if his reaction put his glove where the ball was. Couldn't really make a play on it. Throw over to first, and Katz uh, is back in time. So that's the sixth single for LSU today. It's one of those plays that uh, because it's right at him you may think it's easy it's anything but here's the 01 that's in the dirt and Katz takes off for second base throw down there is going to be in time. Well Katz's aggressiveness uh, did not pay off that time as he is caught stealing on a, a ball that was in the dirt but handled well by Customs. For the Tigers in the fifth no runs on a hit no errors and nobody left. We've played five, three to nothing Tigers on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Three to nothing Tigers as we go to the top of the sixth inning. It'll be Roberts, Customs, and Bass, two, three, and four in the order to do up against Kurt McKeon. Mazda, if it's not worth driving, it is not worth building. Mazda, the official sponsor of the LSU Sports Radio Network broadcast booth, and we invite you to listen to the Paul Maneri Show presented by Capital One Bank from 7 to 8 Monday nights beginning on March 26th on Eagle 98.1 FM in Baton Rouge and live at TJ's Ribs on South Acadian. Check your local listings for the LSU Sports Radio Network affiliate in your area. First pitch from McCune to Roberts is a breaking ball for a strike. That is pitch 62. McCune is on a 75 pitch count uh, as were the first two guys this weekend. The 0-1. That is low. One ball and one strike. Kevin Berry down to the bullpen. And uh, Brent Bonvillian, I believe, is the other Tiger down there. The 1-1. One, one. Strike on the outside corner. It's 1-2. and two. That is correct, sir. Here's a one two. Check swing, but strike three. Four strikeout uh, for Kurt McCune, all of them looking. And there's one gone. Bon Bullen is a, a junior college transfer from Delgado. And Barry, the veteran uh, who we saw earlier in the weekend. Here's Customs, who's one for two with a single. Base is empty, one down. There's a pitch, and his low ball one. Von Bellin also one of the very few uh, left-handed pitchers for LSU. Don't have a ton of southpaw pitchers or hitters on this team. Here's the 1-0. Fly ball to left field. Slade going back, now called off by Jones coming over from center field to make the catch in left center field. And there's two gone. For Alex Bass, who's over 2, he's grounded to short and popped to short. And let's do a CSD scoreboard update, the home of LSU Athletics. And um, here we go. Florida Atlantic leading Alabama 9-4 to in the bottom of the 8th. They're going to sweep that series. Arkansas is uh, just blasting Villanova 14 to nothing in the top of the 5th inning. One final, uh, Missouri, who's coming into the league, beat Auburn 6-4. to First pitch to Bass is outside ball 1. Cal State Fullerton uh, leads Florida 8 to 4 in the top of the 8th. Georgia blanking Presbyterian 8 to nothing in the 7th. 
Washington State leading Mississippi State 4-1 in the fifth. The 1-0 is downstairs. Two balls and no strikes. They're going to play a doubleheader today. There'll be another game to follow that. TCU leading Ole Miss 5-3 in the sixth. And Stanford and Vanderbilt have not scored. They are in the top of the second inning. And the Lady Tigers at the PMAC lead 33-28. to 28, uh, 16 and a half minutes to go in that one over Auburn. The news not as good for the softball team as uh, Cal leads them now 14-3. to 3. Wow. Well, they're the third-ranked team in the nation. Yeah, there will be better days for sure. All right, brief conversation at the mound between Moore and McCune. Now here's a 2-0. And that's a strike, and it's 2-1. and one. 3 to nothing here. LSU leads it. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Base is empty and two down for Air Force. Two one, strike on the outside corner, and it's two and two. McCune gets a strike here. You can call it a day. To wind up in the 2-2. Whoa. Just missed. Boy, I thought he had it there. As he pitches just a little bit high, and the count goes full. Payoff pitch on the way. This one's popped up right side of the infield. Katz right on the line. Now in the foul territory. Makes a catch. Good play. Right there uh, in front of the bullpen, and that will retire the side. For Air Force in the sixth, they go in order, and we go to the bottom half, 3 to nothing Tigers on the LSU Sports Radio Network. 3 to nothing LSU leads it as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Slade Jones and Nola do up against Todd Del Toro. At Serrano's, the party doesn't stop after the game with the best margaritas in Baton Rouge and the finest Mexican this side of the North Gates. Serrano's is the fiesta stop before and after the game. Go to the SerranoSalsaCompany.com for more information, weekly specials, and happy hour listings. Serrano Salsa Company at the North Gates of LSU. Jackson Slade was at the plate uh, when Katz was thrown out trying to steal. Is two for two. Couple of singles from the right side. Del Toro's first pitch is a fastball upstairs. One ball and no strikes. Uh, Jeff tells me from back in the uh, LaBerge Casino control room. Here's the 1 0. That is low. Two balls and no strikes. At uh, 6,700 patrons are over in the uh, PMAC, and that is the largest crowd in three seasons for the LSU Lady Tigers. That's Watching terrific. them uh, play Auburn, and they uh, have the lead. Here's the 2 0. Strike, fastball down the middle, two and one. And the Lady Tigers wearing pink at Cancer Awareness um, game. Pitch to Slade is low, three balls and a strike. And to give you a uh, quick update on the score there, it is 35 to 28. This one is hit very well at center field. Bass, though, won't have to move far. <laughs> That's the kind of ball that uh, has got a little giddy up to it on a day besides today, but it's just a lined out now. In a day, a regular day, particularly with the wind blowing out, that ball's at the warning track, Yeah, I think. Well, and not only that, but, you know, he pulled it just a little bit, and it, uh, it corrected over into center field. I mean, that, that ball's in the gap, probably. Here's Jacoby Jones, who's flown out to center field twice. He takes a strike, 0-1. Trying to pull anything to left field today. The, the, the left fielder's uh, pretty bored out there. Here's the 0-1. That's a strike. Breaking ball 0-2. Ball gets away out of the bullpen. And we got a little short break in the action. Three to nothing, Tigers. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Bases empty, one down for Jacoby Jones. Here's the pitch, very high. One ball and two strikes. Another one, two. This one is popped up behind the plate. Get a load of what uh, Air Force uh, rode here in. 
And I don't mean from the hotel to the stadium. I mean from uh, I heard about Colorado it. to here. <laughs> hey, Charter, all right. Here's the one, two. This one is popped up. Shallow right field. Lobo coming in, fighting the sun, makes the catch. And it came here on a C-17 transport. Well, that's two out. That's just another thing that uh, makes you appreciate and make you very aware of uh, where they're from and what they represent. Base is empty, two down for Austin Nola. He has flied to right and reached on a field his choice, scored a run. Right-handed batter, here's the pitch. Strike on the inside edge, 0-1. Now the 0-1, that's a strike, 0-2. Oh Del Toro has done a very nice job. Now Aaron Nola has started throwing in the Tiger bullpen. Here's the 0-2, high and away, one ball and two strikes. Three runs on six hits, no errors for LSU, no runs on three hits, one error for Air Force. The 1-2, high. Two balls and two strikes. Del Toro on in relief of Michael Cicchini. I'm sorry, Chichi. 2-2. Two -two. Fouled it away down the first base side. Who went four. McCune has gone all the way for LSU, but uh, per the pitch count, uh, he's done. What is his pitch here? 75. Here's a 2-2. This one is hit down the left field line. That is twisting and will go foul past the bullpen. It's about as far as we've seen one hit today. Especially that way. Right. Yeah. Yeah, all three starting pitchers run a 75 pitch pitch count this weekend. Eads through... 71 last night. Gosman threw 68 on Friday night. McCune's somewhere around there. The 2-2 is high, and the count goes full. We'll get you his pitch count in between innings, but Barry Nola and Von Vollen have all down there in the bullpen. Here's the payoff pitch. That is inside ball four. Tiger Walk presented by AT&T. Get it faster with 4G. Rethink possible. Two out walk is the uh, first allowed by Del Toro. And just a sec, uh, the, the third rather, issued by Air Force Pitching. I think when I gave uh, Chi Chi's line, uh, I said one walk is two. Here's Tyler Moore at a two run single his last time, one for two. From the left side, here's the pitch from Del Toro. It's in the dirt, smothered by Custons. That's one ball and no strikes. Nola takes his lead off first. Here's a 1-0. Way outside, two balls and no strikes. And that'll draw a trip uh, from Customs out to the mound to talk to Del Toro. Shadow uh, also is beginning to come into play here now. Um, in addition to the wind, which has been constantly blowing as we talked about, but the shadows from the grandstand now has moved all the way out and engulfing the mound. So uh, the pitcher is uh, pitching now in, in the shadows to home plate. Here's a 2-0. That's down and in. Three balls and no strikes. Casey Yoakum waits on deck if Moore can keep it going. Here's a pitch. That's a strike, and it's three and one. Three runs by LSU, all scored in the fourth inning, and that has been the only scoring in this game. Throw over to first, and Nola is back. Jack uh, Horan. 
Right-hander has gone down to warm up. There goes the runner. The 3-1 is a strike thrown on the second base. He's very high and in the center field. Nola will go on the third. Here comes the throw in there, and he is safe. It'll be the second error on the uh, catcher, Customs. Give Nola a stolen base. Give Customs his second error. And a runner at third base now with a 3-1 and one count. I'm sorry, three and two count. Payoff pitch. Fouled away down the third base side. Don't know how much the wind might have to do with that. That's a uh, throw that's, definitely that's sailed two on it. Customs has thrown into center field. Yeah, the first one he one hop, the second one he sailed. Payoff pitch on the way. Fouled it straight back. Moore stays alive. Payoff pitch to Moore. Bouncing ball, shortstop. Roberts up with it, throws over in time, and that will retire the side. For the Tigers in the sixth, no runs, no hits. There was an error, and one man left stranded at third base. We played six. Three to nothing Tigers on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Three to nothing Tigers as we go to the top of the seventh inning. Do up for Air Force Lobo, Osmond, and Kramer, 5, 6, and 7. And we got a cable lock foundation repair. Pitching change, raising houses, raising standards. Kirk McCune leaves after six innings. He gave up three hits and no runs. He walked one, struck out four, and threw 72 pitches in an outstanding outing. Tell you about the new Tiger pitcher and to take you the rest of the way, the voice of the Tigers, Jim Hawthorne. Well, it is the brother of the uh, LSU shortstop. It's Aaron Nola who um, is making his uh, second appearance. He pitched an inning earlier this weekend he uh, gave up a couple of hits and one earned run didn't walk anybody and struck out two they hit 400 against him and his era is nine as he steps on the mound to uh, open the top of the seventh inning with the home team leading air force three to nothing three runs six hits no errors for lsu no runs three hits and a couple of errors for the falcons of the air force academy lobo osmond and kramer Lobo, left-handed hitter, 0 for 2 today. He struck out, flight out to right field. Nola fires, and there's a little pop out into shallow left field. Slade right there makes the catch, one pitch, one out. And it'll bring up Taylor Osmond, the left fielder, 0 for 2. He flied to right and was called out on strikes. Just a very, very dominating performance by Kurt McHugh. All three of the Tiger starters this weekend pitched superbly as we expected they would. Osmond hitting 200 coming into the game. He's 0 for 2 today. Right-handed batter takes a strike over the outside corner. This young man on the mound, big things expected out of him in his career here at LSU. One out, nobody on. Here's the windup and the 0-1 pitch. Bunted, popped up behind the plate. Moore giving chase, and he makes a diving catch behind the plate and almost headbutted the bottom of the grandstand. What a play by the catcher, Moore, to catch that butt that was popped in foul territory. Outstanding play. And there's two gone. He had to run as hard as he could straight towards the grandstand, dove straight forward, belly flop, caught it, and it looked like he almost hit the grandstand with his head. Here's Kramer, who is 0 for 1. He's walked and struck out, and there's a fastball strike over the inside corner. It's 0 and 1. Two up and two down for Air Force in the top of the seventh inning. 3 nothing LSU. Nola rocks and fires. Swung under the line drive, foul down the right field side at Rolls softly down into the LSU bullpen. And Nola is ahead in the count, 0 and 2. Kramer bats from the left side, looking for his first hit of the year. Here's the pitch. Pass ball fouled back into the screen over by the on deck circle. Third base side. And the count stays at 0 and 2. Kramer walked 
in the first inning was forced out at second base and a ground ball by Roberts and was called out on strikes to open the fifth. Now Nola with the 0-2. Ground ball foul down into the third base dugout. And it stays 0-2. All the scoring came in the bottom of the fourth inning. As LSU got all three of their runs. Now Nola with the 0-2 pitch. Struck him out swinging and the young freshman gets them up and down in order in the top of the seventh. We go to the seventh inning stretch. It's LSU 3, the Air Force Academy nothing. On the LSU Sports Radio Network. It is the seventh inning stretch. The home team, LSU, leads the Air Force Academy by the score of 3 to nothing. And we'll send up the number nine hole hitter, Yoakum, into the top of the order for Hanover and Foster. She gets a change, uh, Casey Gibson, now at shortstop for Air Force. Replacing Roberts. And so um, Gibson will be batting in the two hole. The eight hole, the, the, the other Roberts. The other Roberts, <laughs> I beg your pardon. There's, okay. There's a strike over the outside corner. To the right handed batting Yoakum, who is 0 for 1. He flied out to center and walked. Here's the pitch, swung on and a chopper towards second base. Big hop for Blair, the throw to first in time. And there's one gone. Yoakum is out four to three. We go to the top of the order now and Tyler Hanover. Seventh inning stretch brought to you by Bud Light. The sure sign of a good time. And here we go. We have already started, as a matter of fact. Hanover is uh, lying to a second, struck out and walked. So he is 0 for 2 today. And a fastball is high and outside. And the pitch, strike over the inside corner. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. Ground ball in the hole between short and third into left field. And Tyler Hanover picks up his first hit of the afternoon and LSU seventh. A one out single here in the bottom of the seventh inning and Jared Foster will step to the plate. Now the Air Force had uh, Roberts at short and Roberts at second. Blair Roberts at second base. And Matthew Roberts at shortstop. And he's been replaced. Matthew Roberts has been replaced by Gibson. Foster is one for three and he pops that one up. Out into shallow right field coming in hard as a right fielder and he drops the ball. They're going to get the force play at second base though. The throw down to second is in plenty of time. Well, the sun came into play there as um, the second baseman, Roberts, uh, was called off by Lobo, who could not come up with a catch. But Hanover at first base had to wait because he thought the catch was going to be made. So Roberts picks it up, throws him out at first base, and that is a rare force out on a fielder's choice. Nine to four, nine to six. Nine, four, six. Was it the second baseman that picked uh, it up? Yeah. Okay, I thought the first, I thought the right fielder just reached down and picked it up. So there is two outs now with a runner at first, and it is 0-1 as the throw over to first base. 0-1 to count to Ray Rhymes. Nothing that the Hanover could do about that. Here's the pitch to the plate. Swing and a miss on a breaking pitch down and away, and it's one ball and two strikes to Rhymes, who was hitless today. He is grounded to third, fly to right, fly to center, and there's a, another right-hander up in the bullpen for the Falcons. The stretch, throw over to first base, and Foster is back in time. It's Horan again. Who? Jack Horan. Yep. Now the stretch. Here's the 0-2. The runner goes. The pitch is outside. Throw down to second base is in time. And Foster is gunned down, and that ends the inning. For LSU, no runs on one hit, no errors, and nobody left. We go to the eighth. 
It is LSU 3, the Air Force Academy nothing, the LSU Sports Radio Network. Eighth inning here at LA Box Stadium, LSU leading the Air Force Academy 3 to nothing. Um, Aaron Nola back out on the mound for LSU for his uh, second inning of work. And the Academy will send up Gibson, who uh, was just put in at shortstop. Then it'll be Pierce, and then back to the top of the order for Adam Hill. Every day your car takes care of you, take care of it. Don't use low-quality gasoline and leave crud in your engine. Use the gas to clean. Chevron with Tecron. Care for your car. And Verizon 4G LTE, America's largest 4G LTE network and the official wireless provider of the LSU Tigers. Right-handed batter, the first pitch is hit out into center field right at Jacoby Jones. No problem, makes the catch, one pitch, one gone. Now that's what uh, Nola did the, in the last inning on the first pitch. They fly out to left field here on the first pitch, fly out to center field. Strike thrower. And they don't hit it very far, <laughs> or at least they have it. To this point, well, nobody hits it very far today. Here's Pierce, who is one for two. The nine-hole hitter batting from the right side. And the wind-up of the pitch is a fastball strike at the knees, 0-1. Nick Rumbelow now down going uh, to start warming up for LSU. Pitched an inning last night. Three to nothing, the Tigers. We're in the top of the eighth inning. Nola with the 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss through the fastball by him. And it is 0-2. Three runs, seven hits, no errors for LSU. No runs, three hits, a couple of errors by the Air Force Academy. And Aaron Nola into the windup and the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him reaching on a fastball that may not have been in the strike zone, but it fooled him. And Pierce goes down swinging. That's the second strike out of the ball game for Nola. Top of the order for Adam Hill. Tigers don't have one closer the way uh, you know Matty Ott held a position down for the last three years, but you're going to see them use Nola, Rumbelow, and Nick Goody all in short relief situations. Adam Hill is one for three today. Bats from the left side. There's a fastball that just misses. It bounces off the glove of Moore. Rolls over to the own deck circle, and it's one ball and no strikes. Moore singled to lead off the ball game, was stranded at third. Is that's the only threat that the Air Force has had? That was back in the first inning. He has flied out and grounded out. Left-handed batter, the pitch high and away. Two balls and no strikes. That uh, fly out to right field was a great diving catch by Ryan. We've had two great defensive plays today for LSU. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul back into the screen. And it's two and one. The other was the outstanding catch of the attempted bunt that was popped up behind the plate that Moore dashed back towards the grandstand at a belly flop and caught the ball on another outstanding defensive play. Now the 2-1. Swing and a miss. Through the fastball by him and it's two and two. They've hit Nola anywhere from 90 to 93 miles an hour, so he's got some giddy up on it. Well, I, I think Coach Maneri said LSU had six or seven that could touch 90 in the bullpen this year. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Fouled out of play. That will go uh, back up over the third base dugout into the grandstand. And the count stays at 2-2. Two and two. I would imagine... Let me do this in my head. At least four that I can think of and maybe five that can touch 93 or better. Wow. That used to be unheard of. Here's the 2-2. Swung at a ground ball foul down the first base side. will roll into the LSU dugout. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. I mean, if you had one, you know, that used to be pretty good. Well, Eads and Gosman... Nolan Rumbelo, I know, have all hit 93. Now the 2-2. Fly ball to left field. Slade drifts over towards the left field foul line and makes the catch. And for the second straight inning, the freshman Nola gets them up and down in order. We go to the bottom of the eighth. It's LSU 3. The Air Force Academy nothing. The LSU Sports Radio Network. 3 to nothing, LSU. The Tigers bat in the bottom of the eighth inning. It'll be Rhymes, Katz, and Slade. 3, 4, and 5 in the order to face the right-hander, 
Del Toro, who is uh, working his fourth inning. Inside LSU Baseball with Paul Maneri is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. And it airs statewide every Sunday night at 1035 on WBRZ in Baton Rouge, the LSU Sports Television Network. Check the local listings in your area. Academy Sports and Outdoors, the right stuff, low price every day. First edition of Inside LSU Baseball is Sunday, March 25th. Ryan's over three today. He has fly to right, fly to center, grounded to third. Right-handed batter. Here is the pitch to the plate, and it misses down and away. Del Toro does not wind up. He works out of the stretch, whether there's anybody on base or not. Here's the pitch. Low and inside. Two balls and no strikes. Right-hander warming down in the Air Force bullpen and in the Tiger pin. The 2-0 pitch on the way to the plate. Swung on and lined out into left field, and that is in for a base hit. One hop to Osmond. Rhymes picks up his first hit of the ball game, a leadoff single. The eighth single LSU has had today, the eighth hit. And here's Mason Katz, who has a couple of those. He is a two for three and has scored a run. All three runs were scored by LSU on three runs and three hits back in the third inning. There's a rumble for the Tigers and four and for the Air Force Academy. Katz batting from the right side. There's a throw over to first as Rhymes gets back safely head first. Way to nothing LSU batting in the bottom of the eighth inning. This will be this will close out the first weekend of baseball here at Ellig Bike Stadium. Here's the pitch. On the high and inside, and it's 1-0. and Next weekend, Appalachian State comes in for a three-game series. The Tigers will host McNeese on Wednesday afternoon, 3 p.m. first pitch. Here's the 1-0. Swung on and fouled out of play down the right side, and it's the one ball and one strike. Lady Tigers have opened it up now. 15-point lead with under four minutes to play at the PMAC, 50-35 to over Auburn. CST scoreboard update. NCAA tournament uh, coming to the Maravich Center. The Lady Tigers. There's a pop-up out into shallow center field. Coming in is the right fielder now as the ball is blown over to right center field. And Lobo makes the catch for the first out of the bottom of the eighth. First and second round of the women's NCAA tournament will be hosted at the Maravich Center. I'm saying Lady Tigers will be there. I think they will. They've done a lot to help their case in the last three weeks. And in and, 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 and women's, uh, they allow you to play on your home court, don't they? They don't do that in men's play. Here's the pitch to the plate. Swung on the runner. Going. It's fouled out of play down the right side. So Jackson Slade, two for three today. Like Mason Katz, he has a pair of singles and scored a run. And he has flied out to center field. You remember the last year they allowed that in men's play? Yeah, it was 86 when LSU. Uh, Anthony Wilson. <laughs> absolutely. Throw over to first base, not in time. Oh, yeah, can't forget that. I mean, th those, a game against uh, Memphis State was incredible. And then the game prior to that against Purdue. Now the pitch gets away from the catcher, Custins, and rolls over and hits the grandstand. By the on-deck circle, that'll be a wild pitch, I'm guessing, and Rhymes moves down to second base. It is a wild pitch. And then the Tigers went to Atlanta and promptly beat Georgia Tech and Kentucky and had a nice little trip to Dallas. That was quite a team. Well, it was. That was quite a year. You, yeah. <laughs> I mean, with all that happened in that year with the chicken pox and on and on and on it goes, that was something. They play like four games in five days to make up for that. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Oh, uh, and uh, much of it on the road, mm -hmm. including one at Georgetown. Wow, I'd forgotten about that game. <laughs> well, could time called as uh, Slade steps away from the plate. One ball, one strike, one out. Now, that's a, the year that Kentucky had beaten LSU three times. Now the pitch, down and away, and it's two balls and a strike, and the Tigers won over Kentucky to get to the final four. That was in Atlanta, and... Uh, that the old Omni? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's 
That's when Don Redden made the pass to Ricky Blanton, who made the layup. Here's the 2 1. Low it inside. And it's three balls and a strike. Now Ricky Blanton's on the broadcast with you. That's right. Are you insinuating anything? No, <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Check of the runner at second. Here's the 3 1. Swing and a miss, and the bat goes sailing wow. back into the screen. That, that uh, just slipped out of the hands of Slade and hit about 15 or 20 feet up on the screen over by the third base dugout. And it's a full count. That's a good thing. Uh, it was as far as it was because another three feet, it would have missed that screen and gone uh, probably up on that yeah. Air Force dugout and into the stand. So. Check of the runner out at second base and the pitch to the plate. Swung on and fouled out of play. Down the right side will go up into the bleachers. And the count stays full. Ryan single to lead off. Was wild pitch down to second base and Katz popped out to right field. Full count to Slade with Jones on deck. Three nothing Tigers in the bottom of the eighth inning. And a look to second base. Sends Rhymes back to the bag. Rumbelow will uh, come in for LSU to try to close it out in the top of the ninth inning. LSU pitching has been superb here today. Payoff pitch. Swung on, and there is a fly ball into center field. It's going to drop in for a base hit. They will send the runner, and it's going to be a 4 to nothing ball game. A nice 3 for 4 day for Jackson Slade. Rhymes scores from from uh, second base. That wild pitch is definitely in play. In play as the Slade picks up the RBI and gets his third single. And now he's going to be replaced at the first base by uh, Chris, Chris Chamber, who will come in and run. And we may be going to have our first uh, in the inning live pitching change, and we do. So we'll take a timeout, a pitching change timeout, and be right back with more baseball here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Change presented by Cable Lock Foundation Repair. Cable Lock uh, Raising Houses, Raising Standards. Uh, Todd Del Toro went three and a third innings. He allowed four hits and one run earned. Walked one, didn't strike out anybody. And Jack Horan, right-hander, is on in relief. Horan's making his third appearance of the season. He pitched in both games on Friday. He's 0-1. He took the loss against Alcorn in the opener. 13 and a half ERA, two innings, three hits, three runs, all earned, two walks, four strikeouts, 333 BA against. And Jacoby Jones swings and fouls it into the dirt at the plate. And it is 0-1. Chambra is the runner at first base, replacing Jackson Slade, who finished with a very good 3-for-4 day. Jones is 0-for-3. He's uh, flied out all three times, twice to center and once to right. Now Horan stretches. There goes the runner. It's high and inside. Throw down to second base, and he is out at second base. That's three today. Tigers having a difficult time swiping a bag as Shamber is thrown out. Two outs and nobody on now, and 0-1 oh the count to Jacoby Jones. It's been feast or famine. They've stolen two bases, but they've been caught three times. And on the two stolen bases, the ball went out into center field, and they were able to take an extra base. Now here is actually the 1-1 pitch down and away, and it's two balls and one strike. Tigers run on the board here in the eighth. They lead it four to nothing. Here's the two one swung on and grounded foul down the end of the third base dugout. And Nick Rumbelow is going to have an opportunity to try to give LSU back to back shutouts on consecutive days, which doesn't happen very often. 19 to nothing win last night over all corner. Two two swung on hit out into left field. Osmond is there, draws a bead, makes the catch, and that retires the side. In the inning, there was one run on two hits. No errors, and nobody left. We go to the ninth with a score, LSU 4, the Air Force Academy nothing on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Back at the box before we give you the official pitching change, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the LSU Sports Radio Network.
This pitching change presented by Cable Lock Foundation Repair. Cable Lock raising houses, raising standards. Uh, outstanding uh, outing for Aaron Nola. He went two innings, all zeros, but he struck out two. And Nick Rumbelo is here to try to save the shutout. Rumbelow's second appearance of the season. He pitched in last night's game. No decisions, an ERA of zero. He threw an inning, gave up a hit and a walk, struck out two. Batting average against him, 250. Shamber stays in the game in left field in place of Jackson Slade. You can watch HD quality live video of at least 30 baseball games as well as post-game highlights and condensed games exclusively in the Go Zone on LSUsports.net. Members of the Go Zone also have access to all live audio streams and Coach Maneri's weekly shows. Visit LSUsports.net slash Go Zone to sign up. Lady Tigers putting the finishing touches on a win over the PMAC. They lead it by 17 with under a minute to go. Blair Roberts will lead things off here for the Air Force Academy tonight. There is a ground ball, hit it up the middle. Nice grab by Nola. The throw the first is not going to be good. It went under the glove of Katz. That was an outstanding job by Nola to get to the ball. It was deep behind the bag at second base. He threw off balance, and Katz unable to save it at first base. And uh, that's probably going to be a base hit. Yeah, and a nice job by Tyler Moore to be backing up there so that the runner could not advance. And then put it on the board yet, but that's they're gonna call it an error. I don't know. I don't know about that. I, that that was a very very hard play. And I'm not sure who the error would be on. It's on Nola. I I know what he's gonna say. He's gonna say that the the play has two different components. That it was not a routine play to get to it, but once you get it, you got to make the throw. I don't necessarily agree with it, uh, but that's how they're gonna rule. Yep, that's that's a tough call for um, for Nola. So it's the first error that LSU has made this year. There's a fastball strike over the inside corner, and it is 0-1. Am I correct in that? In this, yes. The first error? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is uh, Custins. Garrett Custins, batting from the right side. He is uh, one for three today. From below stretches and delivers, and that's a strike over the inside corner, and it's 0-2. See, I understand that what, what, what they're saying is when you make the, the... The tough part of the play was for him to get to that ball, but once he does... Well, then, then the throw is routine. Now, I don't agree with that. I, I'm not, I, yeah, I'm not so sure the toughest part of it wasn't the throw. Well, because, because he's because throwing off balance, going away from the bag. All in one motion. See, I, yeah. I think a play like that, when you make, like, you see a guy make a diving stop on a one-hop line drive. Then he gets to his feet and he's got plenty of time to make the throw. Well, then if you throw it away, there's a ground ball and this could be two. There's the lob to second base for one. The relay to first is not in time. Good speed. Down the, uh, down the line by Customs. They get Roberts at second base, and Customs is on, on the fielder's choice. You see what I'm saying? You get, a, yep. you get a, a line drive, one hop. So the guy makes a diving stop, and he gets up. Now, because the ball was hit so hard, he's got plenty of time to yep. make the throw. Well, then you throw that away. Well, then I understand. I do, too. Okay. Uh, that particular play looked like, it to me, it was all in one motion. That Nola had to range behind the bag, make the throw. Yeah, that's what I that's, that's what I said. Error. If you break it down into two parts, here's the pitch to Bass, and it's popped up. Let's see. It is a Yoakum shading his eyes. Now he is called off by Nola, the shortstop, who makes the grab, and there's two gone. And final discussion about that is if you break it down into two uh, parts, getting to it is one, and throwing it is the other. I thought the throw on that play was the hardest part of it because it took a great effort to get to, but a very difficult throw. Yeah, because it's all in one motion. Yeah. You, he's ranging behind the bag, and he's got to make that throw. And That was an interesting play right there. It's, uh, Nolan ends up catching that ball where the second baseman usually stands because Yoakum lost wind. it. Well, Yoakum lost it, though. Fastball <laughs> strike at the knees, and it's 0-1. You can see Yoakum kind of stuck his hands out, and Nola, yeah. Nola had it all the way. But the reason that the ball was where it was is, is oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. the wind was yeah. blowing it that way, and it actually was fairly easy for Nola to make the catch. Now the stretch in the 0-1. Strike two over the outside corner, and Rumbelow's the strike away from closing this one out. Outstanding pitching today for LSU. McCune and Nola and Rumbelow. Left-handed hitting Lobo stands at the plate. Here comes the stretch and the 0-2 pitch. And there's a line drive out into left field, and it is in for a base hit. Well, that's a great piece of hitting there by Lobo, who hung in there down 0-2 and, and lined the pitch by Rumbelo. One hop in front of Shambra in left field. And that is the fourth hit of the ball game now for Air Force. And they've got 
two runners on base for the first time since the first inning with two outs. And here is Taylor Osmond, who is 0 for 3. He's flied out, struck out, and popped out. On a great catch by Moy attempt on an attempted bunt in foul territory behind the plate. Run below stretches and delivers. That's a fastball strike over the inside corner. And it's 0-1. Roberts got on on what was ruled an error by Nola. Customs forced, Nola, forced him at second base, got on on the fielder's choice. Bass popped up. as a high ball out of play down the right side. And Lobo lined an 0-2 pitch to left field. And again, Rumbelow is within one strike as he is 0-2 to Osmond. And you hear the applause from the Tiger fans sending out support to end the ball game. Rumbelow looks at second base. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Struck, well, struck him out. The ball's in the dirt. Moore's got to pick it up. Fire it down to first base. Oh, it's off of the glove. My goodness of cats. And the bases are loaded. Well, that's just a bad throw by Moore on, on what is what should have been a routine play. On a strikeout, on a ball in the dirt, all he's got to do is throw it down to first base. And he's behind the, he's well behind the plate, so he's trying to throw it outside so he doesn't hit the runner, and he threw it too far outside. So that's the, the strikeout goes to Rumbelow. And we've got David a pinch Thomas. hitter. Thomas is going to pinch hit for Ryan with the bases loaded and two outs. And Rumbelo probably deserves better than what he's gotten here in the inning. Here's the stretch and here's the pitch. Fastball strike right down the middle. He's been 0-2 on the last two batters. Got a line drive single out of Lobo and then a strikeout. And an error by Moore on the throw to first base that would have ended the game. Here's the pitch. Swung on a fly ball. That should do it. Popped out into right field. Rhymes. Camps out under it and makes the catch. And that will retire the side. So in the inning for Air Force, no runs on one hit. There were two Tiger errors, and they leave the bases loaded. And the final score, LSU blanks Air Force 4 to nothing. We'll be back after this on the LSU Sports Radio Network. 